All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Alan Langer, who is, where are you today, Alan? Actually, I'm in East Greenwich, Rhode Island right now. East Greenwich, That's Rhode right. Island, fantastic. Yep. And I'm here as usual in San Diego. And Alan is the author of the book, The Seven Secrets to Selling More by Selling Less. And that is what we want to talk about today. So, Alan, just first of all, give me the genesis of the book and where the idea came from. The genesis of the book, it's a good question. Um, so I've been in sales uh, almost 25 years now. And uh, last 15 or 16 is sort of direct business to consumer. And I, I learned over the years that when you, when you join a company, they basically teach you the sales pitch. They teach you the process. Mm -hmm. They teach you how to do this and that and follow A, B, C, D, E. And I realized that produces, you know, maybe 20, 30 percent success rate at the most. And uh, I never thought that that was, you know, successful, you know, talking mm -hmm. to 10 people and two of them say yes. That's to me, that's not a very successful sales rate. So um, I started realizing that instead of following the process, uh, I started wanting to help people rather than sell people. My goal was never to go into an appointment. With the, with the goal of actually making the sale. It was the goal of actually helping that person, which culminated usually in a sale more mm -hmm. often than it didn't. So that's sort of how the, the book started. And then as I was developing my own ways of, of doing those things, um, I, I was challenged. I wasn't challenged, but I, one of my, uh, my bosses at one point said to me, what you do cannot be taught because you just have that in you. And I said, no, it can be taught. And then I, then I wrote the book. Excellent. Um, and looking at, uh, you know, some of the chapter titles are quite interesting here. I'm just the one jumps out immediately. Chapter one and snake oil and comic books. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what in the beginning of the book, I kind of I kind of asked the question, how did we get here? How did we get to the mm -hmm. point where um, people don't like to talk to salespeople? They don't want to meet right. with salespeople. Um, I asked uh, when I was starting the book, uh, I, I wrote my entire book in this little coffee shop in East Greenwich. And um, for three weeks, I asked everyone who walked in the door the same question. Do you like to speak to or meet with a salesperson? And all 231 said no. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why is that? Like everybody needs to buy something. Uh, we, sure. all have to, we all have to purchase something. But the, but the anxiety that happens when you have to meet with a salesperson is a real thing. And where did that come from? So that, that, that's kind of a tongue in cheek saying of, of a history of this is how it happened. This is why. We don't like salespeople because of the snake oil salespeople, because of the ads in the back of the comic books that ripped everybody, every 10-year-old off <laughs> as they were growing up. So you have that, you have that fear in you about salespeople. Yeah, and it's kind of, and it's obviously, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate because let's face it, I mean, as buyers, we, we don't know everything about everything, even though we may be more informed today. Sometimes we have too much information. We don't even know how, what to do with it. So we really need salespeople to be able to bring their experience, their experience of working with other people uh, and how they can and help us. So bridging that divide is, is kind of critical for both, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, the book is ultimately about you becoming the salesperson that people actually want to meet with. They want mm -hmm. to talk to and they want to refer. Because think about it. In your whole life, you probably have only met a very few, a very small few of salespeople that you actually liked that you would refer. Right. Most of them you didn't like. And when you meet the person that you say, wow, that was a good experience, you like cherish that. It's like, oh my God, I found, you know, uh, I found a bottle of water on a deserted island. It's like, it doesn't happen that often. So that's how this book is about becoming that, you know, that, that person that people want to meet with. And then you, you just, you, you skyrocket your, your place uh, in your selling and in your, in your organization. Yeah. Because one of the, one of the trends that, you know, happened uh, has happened is this idea of, uh, salespeople kind of pretending that they're not salespeople, like giving themselves like different titles and all of this kind of thing. But at the end of the day, when you engage, when a buyer engages, they know you're a salesperson. You can exactly. tell them, you can put whatever title you want on it. So to your point is, I mean, that kind of reinforces the, almost the stereotype you're talking about because you're trying to hide behind the title instead of just being, uh -huh. being the best salesperson. Because at the end of the day, there's a, sales, a good salesperson is a fantastic job and, it's, and it has a fantastic role to play. Right. And, and I, I read the other day that, that the sales profession is the number one profession as far as the amount of people in, in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's scary because most people don't want to meet with you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's an amazing um, you know, conundrum 
Um, so that's why I, I, I think the book helps people. And, you know, we're not talking rocket science here. There's just seven mm-hmm. techniques that I come up with that are, that are uh, fairly simple, but most salespeople don't even think about them. They don't think about doing them because they're always thinking about the process they were trained and they got to tell all the technical features of their product or their service and, and all of that stuff. You, you don't have to do any of that stuff. There's a way to, 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 to sell a lot of your stuff to a lot of different people without being that annoying salesperson. So what are some things that, uh, you know, if there are salespeople who are listening to this or watching this, um, what is the first thing they can do to kind of look at how they sell today and maybe do a, a, an assessment or inventory of how they show up? Well, chapter one or secret one is about your mindset. And I would tell a salesperson or when I'm coaching someone, I'm like, okay, when you set an appointment or your company sets the appointment for you, what is your goal walking up to that appointment? And pretty much 100% of the time they'll answer, well, to make the sale. And I say, well, that shouldn't be your goal. Because if, you, if your goal is to actually make the sale, that's, all, that's written all over your face. And you are now the salesperson that that person is scared of and doesn't want to talk mm-hmm. to. Even if they need your product, they're sort of talking to you reluctantly. So if you change your mindset, make the switch to, okay, I'm, my goal right now is just to help this person. I'm not even going to forget, I'm, forget about the sale. I'm going to find out what they need. I'm going to help them. I'm going to let them know that I'm here to help them, that I'm not here to sell them. And then let that conversation take its course with you showing them that you care about them and you're listening. And then all of a sudden, oh, wow, you want to buy my product at the end of the, at the, end of the conversation. So number one is, is get rid of the I have to make this sale when you walk in and turn it into I really want to help this person, um, you know, sincerely. I really want to help them. And then that will turn into more sales than you would ever imagine. Yeah, and 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 uh, and following on from that is obviously if you take that approach, uh, it has it is a twofold effect, as you say. You know, ultimately, it's going to be easier for you to make the sale because you have actually you're doing something to help the person. But equally, it's going to uncover pretty quickly if you can help that person. And yeah. If you can't, then hey, you've just got out. You've just got out of a sale faster than. Uh, staying in something that's not going to close and wasting a lot of time, right? Right. And, and also, I, I, I tell a lot of reps that I train, I'm like, it's okay not to make the sale. If doing the right thing is not making the sale, that comes back to you tenfold. If you try to sell something to someone who doesn't need it, well, then you're just the typical snake oil guy that they were scared of in the first place. And you'll never get referred because it, it, they'll always find out. It's not something you're going to be able to hide. And if, if you can sleep at night knowing that I just told this old lady a uh, uh, a patio door that she didn't want or she didn't need, mm. and that's okay with you, then great. Um, but that's not the type of salesperson that I would ever want to talk to or be. Yeah. And and you say, uh, you know, like a story's worth a thousand pictures. And uh, uh, do you think uh, a lot of salespeople use storytelling enough? No. I think it's actually the, the, the one of the biggest uh, deficits with salespeople. I think out of the seven secrets, telling stories is probably, in my opinion, the most important um, because it can turn it can turn a technical product or a technical presentation into something that a customer will understand. If mm-hmm. you tell a story, you stand out from the other reps that they might be meeting, and you become much more of a uh, a likable person. You're not that robot. You're just, the stories or a metaphor or an analogy are an enormous enormous help in sales because you just Every time you hear the sentence, once upon a time, you listen. If you're listening mm-hmm. to a speaker, they start to tell a story, you perk up. Happens in sales too. If you can come up with a story, especially if it's related to your product, um, yeah. you'll be way ahead of everyone. And that's, uh, and that's what I think is, is the most powerful thing, as I said, I mean, when a salesperson, because if you're coming to sell to me, what I'm most interested in is what you've done with other people mm-hmm. like me maybe in the same industry or whatever. And if you can, if you can, if you have got great stories and maybe where somebody had a similar challenge and they went, and it wasn't all straightforward either. Like it's a good story about how you got to the result. For me, that's a lot more compelling. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's like, you know, I was talking to a, a couple of car salesmen the other day and they were, the concepts I have in my book, they weren't, it was like foreign to them because all they're told, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, they're trained to drill that person into submission until they buy the car. It's just, it's, mm-hmm. it's amazing that still happens. And I said, what if you actually, you know, showed some pictures and told a story about the, uh, about Joe in the factory who helped build the car and has three kids and 
you know, the job that he had to build your car puts food on the table. Well, mm-hmm. Just that little story. What do you think would that person would do? You think they'd go to another dealership? No, they all of a sudden now they like you because you're the different car salesman. And they're going to probably buy the car from you simply because you told the story about, about one guy who helped build it. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I mean, because I think, I mean, that's a, that's a classic example of an industry that needs to <laughs> modernize. I mean, nowadays, I mean, when I do, when I do the car thing, I do, I, I, I refuse to show up. I email and email and email until they give me all the information. And then I say, then I will show up and boy, did they, they still fight tooth and nail to say, oh yes, but if you could just come in and I go, nope, not coming yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> See that? You're scared to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It really is. Mm-hmm. And you have a you have an interesting one there. Is my advice is show the price. Yeah, that that, that there's a lot of different layers to that chapter because sure. I, I think I think men, outside the retail industry, um, I think most salespeople are trained or most organizations don't understand how to show price effectively or present price mm-hmm. effectively. There's so many psychological things to pricing that people don't realize. Um, and one of them, let's say you're in a, 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 an in-home sales situation and you're selling kitchens or you're selling a boiler. Sure. Um, you have to see, you talk to the customer, you find out all their wants, their needs, blah, blah, blah. And, you, and you're developing the price and all of a sudden you flip it around and there's the big reveal. There's the price. And the customer is usually like, oh my God, I wasn't yeah. expecting that. Well, what I do is when I was selling windows and doors, I would have them design it in front of them and they could see the price change as they're, as they're picking their features and benefits. So now they're owning the product, they're building it without me revealing anything. So at the end of the day, when they chose something to raise the price or lower, it was their choice, it wasn't me. And it, now it's like, okay, now they know how much the price is. Now they just have to figure out how they wanna pay for it. Um, it, it happened, it, it was very effective in entry doors because of all the different features and choices you can make. Right. Um, so that's what I mean from a, from a show this price standpoint. But there's also so many uh, pricing techniques with using the power of three or the number nine. I mean, everyone knows the number nine, nine ninety nine looks better than $10. Mm-hmm. Why is that? The million studies about the number nine makes people feel better. It's not the right. fact that it, that it, it's lower by a penny. It's just that nine makes people feel better. So there's a lot of different ways that pricing chapter, I think will help people in how they're presenting what they have uh, in front of the customer. Yeah, and I think it's an it's an important uh, piece of advice, and I would encourage people to read the book uh, because let's face it, I mean we we like surprises with pricing when the price is lower than we expect, but we don't like surprises when it's higher than we expect, right? So right. Exactly. you know, having so try taking the surprise element out is always a good thing. Yeah, you don't really want the customer to be surprised at the end, or be or or having that anxiety be built up throughout the presentation or throughout the time you're building the price because. You know, they may have an idea of what it is and they're hoping it's what it's going to be, but it's usually never is that price. So if, the, if that's in front of them the whole time, all that's out, you know, there's no anxiety at that point. It's them yeah. choosing the price. And, I, and also, and I mean, I think also transparent pricing, because if you go back to your car analogy as well, I mean, when I do my emailing back and forth, if I'm leasing a car or something, the thing I always have to say so is this the actual price inclusive of tax and everything? And then, right. of course, they come. Oh, well, it's this. And you go, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, if you can eliminate that kind of anxiety that a customer feels and then do some psychological stuff that makes them feel better, because you ultimately you want, them to make, you want them to feel really good about what the purchase they made. And a lot yeah. of that is psychological. If, here's a great example of pricing. There was a, a study done where they took uh, three women's blouses, same exact blouses, same color, white, whatever it was, they put one on the rack for $34. They put one on the rack for $39. They put one on the rack for $40. Guess which one sold the most by 80%? What was it? The $39 one. So even at $5 more than the $34 blouse, people felt comfortable. They felt like this is the blouse I want simply because of that number nine. So that's a good example of, of someone, of a psychological technique to use that makes someone feel actually good about what they just did. So um, in the last couple of minutes we have here, so what, uh, from your book, A Core Idea, what is something that you think that um, anybody listening should just start thinking about today? Just one, one key element. Well, I would start thinking, if it, there's really two types of salespeople out there. There's, there's salespeople that have been trained to follow their process, their company's process. So I would, I would have them take a look at that process and 
be on the other side of it. Like pretend someone is giving that process to you and how you would feel. And if that's going to make you feel like you're talking to a salesperson, then you need to change it. You need to figure out a way to change that and go to the helping instead of the, uh, instead of the selling kind of mindset. The other salesperson doesn't have that type of training. Uh, they're just out there winging it. You know, they're a realtor and no one's trained them how to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, that's the person that, that kind of needs some guidance, but, but be careful because when you go online and you look up sales books, there's a billion sales books out there and 99% of them say all the same, same thing. How to handle objections, how to do, you know, closing techniques, all that stuff. Um, I'd say read my book. <laughs> but, yeah. you, know, you, you want to go in and you want to be able to help the person but you also have to know how, how they're thinking psychologically with body language and stuff to help you get to the point of action. Because there, there's obviously techniques for that too. Sure. And, and it is, I mean, it's, it's, it, you just touched on that there, but it is amazing sometimes. Like we're all, we're all consumers and we're all buyers. But then sometimes when we put on our sales hat, we completely forget about that. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that the other person on the other side, the buyer, feels the same as we do when we're buying. Right, exactly. I mean, you, you, you talk to, say, I, I, I even interviewed over 100 salespeople and I said to them, do you like to talk to a salesperson? 100% <laughs> said no. <laughs> and they're salespeople. I don't exactly. like to talk to people either. <laughs> and neither do you. Listen, yeah, I know. So, Alan, this would be great. Uh, we're bumping up against the end of our time. But before sure. we go, just tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you. All right, so my website, you can get my book if you go to my website and click on there. It'll take you to the Amazon link, but it's, it's www.allanger.com. So it's A-L-L-A-N-G-E-R.com, allanger.com. You can get my book there. And I would say the first person to email me from this show and mention Sales Pop, I will send you a free copy of my book. And my book, uh, my email is allan, A-L-L-A-N, at allanger.com. Fantastic. So there you have it. First person to email Al is going to uh, is going to get a free copy of his book. Uh, that's and I'll fantastic. Find it as well. <laughs> Excellent. Even better. Now you see. Now you can hold on to it. And it'll be worth money. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, listen. This has been great. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Alan's details uh, you'll see on his profile. His book will be there as well. So you need to go to his website. You can go to Click straight from there to Amazon. And uh, listen, thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure being with you. I really appreciate it. Thank you.